Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone, friends. This program is called the Islamic values. There are 17 values that we have identified. Of course, there are many that will contribute towards the common goodness of humanity. The purpose of Islam, very briefly, as we discussed uh, with Dr. Safi Kaskas, is to create societies where every human feels secure about himself or herself, who no matter what faith, uh, race they belong to. Dr. Safi Kaskas and I are pleased to present these values. Let me give you a short introduction of Dr. Kaskas. He is a management executive and a strategist with more than 40 years of experience. For this particular program, Kaskas has authored Quran with reference to the Bible, a contemporary understanding, a new never before compiled translation of the Quran into contemporary English that is American English for everyone to read, easy to read and understand, featuring more than 33,000, sorry, 3,000 parallel reference to the Bible. Uh, Pope Francis has appreciated his book for the comparative verses in the Bible and the Quran. And for those who follow Christianity, they find uh, com comparables in both of them. Let me briefly mention about this program and then we'll go to Dr. Kaskas. The essence of Islam, it is a chapter from the book, American Muslim Agenda. Islam, friends, remains a myth to many a people, including Muslims, simply because the, its purpose was rarely explained and its role vis-a-vis face-to-face humanity is seldom understood. Most Muslims have reduced Islam to rituals. Rituals are an important part of every faith and everything we do in life. But many Muslims, including non-Muslims, believe that Islam is all about five pillars, burqa, beard, and the costume. Sadly, that is how he is understood by everyone. But Islam is much more than that. It is a way of life. How do you live a life where everybody can live in peace and secure, feel secure about it? And you can learn that from Dr. Safi Kaskas and me. Uh, let me share briefly for about three minutes and Dr. Kaskas will come right after that. In 2003, in 2003, I undertook the difficult task of mining the essence of Islam of each religion going beyond the rituals. The bottom line question to all my colleagues from atheists to Zoroastrians was how does your religion contribute towards the well-being of the entire humanity? When Lord Krishna says, surrender to me, Allah says, uh, submit to my will. Jesus says, follow me. What are they saying? Uh, is it physical, literal meaning? Or is it meaning to emulate them, how they created better society. So we took to the air and for every day, five days a week, we talked about religion, every religion. Every Monday it was Christianity, Friday it was Islam, Thursday it was Hinduism, and Tuesdays and Wednesdays we did Sikhism, Judaism, Jainism, and um, interfaith and other religions. The clergy from each faith had to relearn communicating how their traditions, how their religion contributes towards the well-being of entire humanity. We assumed, we assumed our audience had never heard of God, our religion, how they would take it, your message. We did a total of 780 hours of radio show called The Wisdom of Religion, All the Beautiful Religions. God willing, I'm looking forward to creating a program on NPR or other radio station every week for people to understand the essence of each faith, including Islam. What is the need to understand Islam? Why do we want to understand Islam? When we live as neighbors, next door, fellow workers, students, players, activists, passengers in buses or trains, the inhabitants in the same city, it behooves us to learn about one another's belief motivations, moments of celebration, devotions, and commemoration, and what we believe. 
the more we know about the other, the less mythical they would become. Creating a friendly environment for all of us to function efficiently, effectively. Whatever we do, knowledge leads to understanding and understanding to acceptance of the otherness of the other, leading us into tension-free and sustainable prosperity. Religion is a system that guides one to live in balance with the self and what surrounds us, life and matter. Dr. Sheikh Rashid Ganuchi was crystal clear when he was asked about what is Islam. Dr. Ganuchi said, the role of religion is to answer the big questions for us, those relating to our existence, origins, destiny, and the purpose for which we are created. It is to provide us with a system of values and principles that would guide our thinking, behavior, and regulation to which we aspire. Then Dr. Ganucci adds, Islam is a religion of civilization, which he suggests elsewhere in the essence and purpose of every religion. I'd like to share this with uh, Native American Chief Seattle, who said it most perfectly. He said, all things in the universe are connected. Whatever befalls the earth, befalls the sons of the earth, that is the inhabitants. Man did not weave this web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does it to himself at the end. The great Talmudic stage, Hillel said, Rabbi, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That is the whole Torah. The rest is the explanation. Go explore it. That's what he said. I would say the following from the Quran. God has created us into different races, uh, religions, sizes, colors, and by virtue, by extension, religions, and other uniquenesses. Respecting the otherness of the others and accepting the God-given uniqueness to each one of us is the whole truth. And the rest is the explanation. Go study the Quran. Now, the essence, the last paragraph before I introduce Dr. Kaskas, this is the essence that is the chapter 49, 13 says, oh, mankind, remember Quran addresses humanity. It does not address Muslims or anybody in particular. Oh, mankind, we have created you male and female and have made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. The noblest of you, the best one among you, in the sight of God is the one best in conduct that is who cares for his fellow beings, the creation of God. Now, Dr. Safi Kaskas, please share your view. And then after that, we go back and forth and we will ask at the last 30 to 20 minutes, we'll have our friends ask the questions. Very good. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I, uh, uh, Mike, instead of just jumping to the to the to the subject right away, yes, I thought we need to do something a bit different. Yes, we need to investigate every term used and try to seek a definition from the Quran. If we don't find the definition in the Quran, we'll go to the Hadith, mm -hmm. and uh, if we don't find it neither in the Quran nor in the Hadith, we'll use our own intellect, our own reason to try to find a definition. Uh, but uh, you know, you for instance, if we if we start with the with Islam, what is Islam? Does the Quran define Islam? Yes, it does, and I will give you a definition. But is Islam a religion? Well, Islam uh, defined itself as a deen. But what is deen in English? I've been working with the Quran for fifteen years. I've been working with Muslims for at least sixty years. Haven't found anyone. Uh, that gave me a better definition than a way of life. But this is not how the Quran defined deen. Let me, let me give you a definition of deen based on the Quran. In addition of that, our topic today is to talk about the essence of Islam. But there is also the essence of the Quran that we need to talk about. Maybe next time. Indeed. But, 
but there is an essence to the Quran. I worked with the Quran for 15 years trying to translate it into easy to understand English. So, you know, what's the essence of the Quran? I had to ask myself this question two months after I finished the translation, six years after I, uh, I started working with the Quran. Then there is the essence of the Sunnah. We all claim automatically when somebody asks us, uh, where, where, where do you get your religion from? Well, we get it from the Quran and the Sunnah. Well, what is the essence of the Sunnah? What is the Sunnah trying to accomplish? Why do we look at the Sunnah as a major reference for our deen? So let me start by moving forward and try to give you a Quranic definition of the word deen. I think everybody would like to know what the Quran says about deen. Of course. I will, I will read it in English. It is from chapter wow. 30, verse 30. Easy to remember, 30, 30. So stand firm in your devotion to the deen, inclining to truth. According to the innate nature God has instilled in all people, there is no change in God's creation. There is the, this is the correct deen, but most people do not know. Surah 30, verse 30. 30, 30. In Arabic, for those who probably understand Arabic, I don't know who's watching us, but it says in Arabic, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا God is urging us to, to, to stand firm in our devotion to deen. Then he defined that deen. فِطْرَةُ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا He's calling this deen the innate nature that God has given us. And he's saying he gave the same innate nature to every human being from Adam on. Trillions of trillions of people had the same programming built into them. Well, what's this fitra is used for? This fitra is basically used to enable us human beings, descendant from Adam, to recognize who are we, what kind of universe surrounding us, our own environment, and why are we here for? So that innate nature also help us understand that there is a creator for this universe. It's really unnatural for us to be atheists, to, to, to refuse to recognize the existence of God. But it is normal and natural for us to look around and say, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, so beautiful. God gave us all this and uh, uh, for us to recognize him. So our subject today is the essence of Islam. So let's me define what Islam is. Again, I seek the answer first from the Quran, and if I don't find it there, I will search for it in the Sunnah. The Quran says, Qul, Allah is telling Prophet Muhammad, say, Innama yuha ilayya, it is revealed to me, innama, an, innama ilahukum ilahun wahid, that your God is but one God. So, will you be submissive to him? Fahal antum muslimun? Will you be submissive to him? The word Muslimun here is translated the way the first believers who were with the Prophet heard the word and understood it. Those followers of Prophet Muhammad in the first few years were called Mu'minun. They were never addressed as Muslims. Later on, became known as Muslims. And that I translated in my own Quran translation the word Muslimun into those who submiss Submit, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submit to God. It also said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ It says here, who speaks better than someone who calls people to God, does good deed, and says, I am among those who submit to God. In the first definition from the Quran, Quran is saying those who submit to God are, can call themselves, are called according to God, Muslims. According to the second definition, we, Allah added submission to him and doing good deeds. Two things. Later on, he'll add a third requirement 
for someone to be called Muslim, believing in God, doing good deeds, and believing in a day of judgment. Anyway, I won't go to a lot of more details, but I'll tell you, according to these verses, we can better understand what God is saying in the following verse, because there is a very sensitive verse coming. If one seeks a faith other than Islam, submission to God, it will never be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be among the losers. This verse is number three. Uh, ver uh, uh, it's chapter three, verse 85. Yes. And this verse is controversial because many uh, Muslims use it to say Islam is the only religion accepted by, by God. Actually, if we, if we use Islam as a noun, uh, we will have, we'll have a big problem. But if we uh, use it as, as, a verb. A, as, yeah, as a noun verb, noun in action, something I will try to, to reach every day and I fail and I try to do it the next morning, it's a continuous effort, then I will understand if you, if you, whoever wish to have other than Islam as a religion will not be acceptable from him. I translate it as the one who is seeking other than submission to be a deen as, as a way of life, as a way in harmony with the innate nature God gave us, then it would not be acceptable from him. But uh, some of those people who are worrying about what is submission to Allah simply means subscribing to the values that Dr. Safi Kaskas just mentioned, that is believing a creator being accountable for your actions and believing that there is every action we take has a, a, a consequence to that. And subscribing to that. that idea is um, basically submission to God simply means. I will, I will get to that in detail, Mike, because I, this is basically, yes. when we talk about the essence of Islam, all, all this you just said, and I said before, have to do with the essence. Yes. At the end, we have to come to a, a specific definition of what is the essence of Islam. Indeed. Faith and reason actually do not need to be mutually exclusive. You notice, I'm talking about my faith in God, I don't see God. I see, though, what he did around me in my environment. I see that he created me. He created this beautiful earth for me. He created the air I breathe, which is very valuable. We cannot live without that air. Those who have COVID today, if they are not able to get all the air they need, uh, they will have to go into a ventilator. I've, I've been through one. Yes. It almost killed me. A rational definition of deen faith is not only more truthful to the modern universal spirit of intellectual, though, but also superior to the established and ritualistic religiosity of traditional Islam. I'm trying to say just because we learned something when we were kids, just because I heard my grandfather teaching me something, it doesn't mean that I have to be to adhere to what he said the rest of my life, as long as I know. Life is never uh, fixed, is never the same. Things are changing all the time. Science is moving forward all the time. Our knowledge of ourselves is not the same as when my grandfather was, was alive. Our knowledge of the universe is not the same. Because all this is moving forward, our understanding of the, understanding of the Quran has to move forward with it. In conclusion, the essence of Islam is to recognize Allah as our creator who is worthy of being loved and worshiped. I am saying that our purpose of being on this planet is to first come to, come to God willingly. He, he, he says in the Quran, in, in, in Surah Al-Kahf, verse 29, God gave us a free will and a free choice. The translation of that verse is, the truth is from your Lord. Whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him deny the truth. Of course, every choice we make has consequences. Second, the purpose of being on earth. Second, to love God with all our heart, mind, and with all our strength. The Quran says, amanu ashaddu hubban lillah. Believers love God with more vigor. And, 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 and more than anything, Surah Al-Baqarah, 
chapter 2, verse 165. This love is translated, at least for me, into my five daily prayers. This is the purpose of the five daily prayer, to express for each one of us, to express his love and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be God conscious all the time. Taqwa. Having taqwa is being God conscious all the time. Remembering, I don't see him, but he sees me. I'm not with him, but he's with me. So these are the, the we, why we do the five prayer, prayers. But I will, but it will reach its zenith. Our, our worshiping of God will reach its zenith when we are performing the tawaf, the circulation counterclockwise around the Kaaba. There, we will be exercising our highest form of worship because we are willingly in total submission, praising God, the same way the planets go around a star or the star go around the center of the galaxy. They are doing it willingly, unwillingly, based on a physical law, but we are doing it willingly with our free choice. This is what's called in the Quran, al-amana, free choice, al-amana, the trust given to us after it was rejected by the heavens and earth, but was accepted by human beings. Allah says in the Quran, This is in chapter Al-Ahzab, verse 72, chapter 33, verse 72. We offer the trust to the heavens, the earth, and the mountains, but they refused to bear it and feared it. Yet the human being took it on. He has always been unjust and ignorant. 3372. Basically, this is what I want to say. Uh, let me just add one thing about our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in Al Umran, verse 31, the Quran says, Qul in kuntum Allah Allah wa lakum Wallahu Say, if you love God, follow me. The Prophet is saying, if you love God, follow me. And the Prophet is not saying that on his own. God is teaching him to say this in the Quran. God will surely love you and forgive your sins. It's a promise from Allah for us. If we follow the way of the Prophet, the teachings of the Prophet, the revelations received by the Prophet, God will surely love us and will forgive us our sins. God is the most forgi forgiving, the mercy giver. Indeed. Indeed. This is what I wanted to say right now, Mike. Yes. You can comment on this if you like. Sure. Uh, friends, loving God, as I understand, is being in tune with the nature. What is nature? It is harmony. God has created the universe in balance. And the Quran, uh, chapter 55, verse 8 through 11, and he, everything is created in harmony. If he has given us the ability our environment, to manage our environment, he has given us the intellect, as Dr. Kaskas mentioned, over other species, Ashraf al-Makhlukhat, and has expected us to preserve that harmony. Indeed, that is God's will. People ask, what, is, what does God want? Among our species, each one of us is created to be unique with our own thumbprint, eye print, our own DNA, and uh, that uniqueness causes us to seek security for ourselves, which becomes a source of conflict with individuals or groups competing for resources. Then God offers guidance through Quran, through peacemakers in every nation and every community. The Quran says God has sent a peacemaker or a messenger to every community. He has not so let anybody go free. Most of the conflicts can be removed if you learn about one another. Again, chapter 49, 13. And those who do that, he calls them the best of the creation as they restore harmony. There is a word, as Dr. Kaskas, that I have worked through, through several scholars called Islahul Alam. God has created harmony. When that harmony goes off, it is our individual responsibility as well as collective responsibility to restore that harmony, Islahul Alam. 
Islam teaches about building cohesive societies where each one of us functions together, move forward in life. It involves respecting the otherness of the other, honoring freedom of speech, faith, justice, mercy, humility, and treating and feeling all of us are equals. Uh, that is my understanding, Dr. Kaskas. Now you can talk about, um, is, if was there an Islamic governance, what is the role of Muslims in the world? Yes, I don't wanna talk about this. I wanna talk about two things that you mentioned. Okay. Because they're more urgent in the subject we're talking about. Absolutely. You ask what does God want from us? Yes. I, I, it's very important for me after spending all this time with the Quran to try to shed light on this because it will make life easier for other people enlighten their path. Yes. You know, we are all on a journey. That journey needs a lot of light today because it has a lot of things happening around us and we don't want them to confuse us. What God wants from us is very simple. God put us on this earth in order for us to freely choose him. In other words, when I am facing a choice, like right now, you ask me a question, I said, I don't wanna address that question. I made a choice. That choice is either because I want to say something to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the other choice, maybe to talk about what you want me to talk about so people can say, oh, Kaskas is intelligent. You know, that one will feed my ego, the other will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we face a choice on this earth, God gave us a free will so we can always ask ourselves this question. Am I doing it to please my own ego am I, or am I doing it to please him? If I'm doing it to please him, then I'm safe. Later on, on the day of judgment that also Allah told us in advance about, I will spend permanency, eternity with him. Or if I'm choosing my ego most of the time, I will spend eternity away from him. Indeed. And that's hell. Yes. So what God wants from us after giving us all the tools necessary for us to choose him freely is for us to really choose him freely, to truly love him. Why do we wanna love him? Not because he asked us to, but because he deserved to be loved. Because he put me on this beautiful planet. He gave me a short life. He taught me what his characters, what his beautiful names are, so I can imitate them as much as possible. So later on, when I'm spending eternity with him, I will, I, I, I would have have experienced and exercised and tried to be to have some mercy in my heart, in my character, to have some forgiveness in my character. All these are characters from God. The, God is the ultimate of these. But here on earth, we're practicing to have some of that. So when we're eternally with Him, we will have something in common. We won't be just sim. Why did Allah ask Adam to bow? Uh, where, why did Allah ask the angels to bow to Adam? Because Adam had freedom of choice. The angels don't. Adam has a free will and no other creature has it. Yes. We're the only sentient being we know of other than the jinn, but we don't know much about the jinn. We are the only sentient being that have this free will. If you don't mind now, let's open the door for question and answer so more people will, inter, will, inter, will, will enrich this exchange between us. Agree. Okay. Friends, those of you who have some questions, please uh, raise your hand on the chat box and we'll get to them in the same sequence you ask the questions. Keep the question short so he can answer in a short way. Now, friends, you are listening to the essence of Islam. This is a program called Islamic Values. Every Sunday, two to three, Dr. Kaskers and I will be hosting this program for the next 17 weeks. And these are the different Islamic values that contribute towards creating better societies. So each one of us, every human being, 7.5 billion of us feel secure about who we are, regardless of our faith, race, ethnicity, culture, or society we live in. So Mike, please raise your- Mike, I see Michael right here, and he, I know he has a question because he told me so okay. before the program. Okay. Can you please give him the floor? Absolutely. Uh, Michael, go ahead, please. 
uh, unmute yourselves. Well, um, I come from a Christian background. Michael, would you mind and, backing uh, a little bit from the camera? Just a tad bit back. Yes. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So anyway, I come from a Christian background. And um, I have uh, been involved with uh, my friend Safi Kaskas on numerous occasions to discuss uh, a number of issues that I feel that, that Christianity and Islam have, or we feel that Christianity and Islam have in common. Um, one of the issues that uh, I find interesting is the idea that when we talk about submitting ourselves to God, we don't necessarily do that in our own strength. Uh, and I see the, the, the first surah in the Quran, which we pray frequently, as a demonstration of that, because we are asking God to guide us down the straight path. Go ahead. So, if we sincerely are asking God to guide us down the straight path, in my my Christian view, I think God is going to answer that prayer, and He will take us down the straight path. And uh, we may deviate from that path, but He also offers us the opportunity to request forgiveness so that we get back on the path. So that, in my mind, gives me the same sense of security as the Christian concept of, uh, of salvation in the sense of trusting God for our salvation. Uh, do you see anything that my view, anything in my view that should be corrected? Uh, actually, I don't see anything that needs to be corrected, but i like to confirm what you're saying. Uh, I'll tell you a very short story. One day, uh, our beloved Prophet Muhammad was visiting his uncle on his deathbed, was dying. And he was, as far as we know, an idol worshiper. So the Prophet was begging him to recognize that there is no deity worth of worship but Allah that God is the only deity worth of worship. He was saying, please, uncle, say it. It's one word. Say it so I can be your witness on the day of judgment. And he wasn't saying it. Actually, the, prophet, the, the two other uncles who hated Prophet Muhammad were standing on both sides of uh, Abu Talib. And uh, the prophet was broken hearted and he was almost crying and he left the room. Archangel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, came down with, with a verse saying, Inna la tahdi man ahbat, Allah yahdi man yasha. You don't guide whomever you love, but God guides who like to be guided. Those who like, the one who likes to be guided, God will guide them. For 1400 years, we heard from Tafasir, an opposite um, uh, translation or exactly. fear of this. The, the, the traditional um, tafasir were saying, God will guide whoever God wants to guide. That would not be equitable. It's not like God. It's not the God I know from the Quran that I studied for all these years. God is saying, if you wish to be guided, God is committing himself to guide you. All you have to do is say, I, God, I'm yours. And then he will come down and say, I'm yours too. What, what is it I can do for you? So this is my belief. This is my faith. This is how my Quran translation read. If you see God, God will immediately come toward you. So salvation is definitely sure for those who intend to be saved. Well, are they people who don't want to be saved? The Prophet ﷺ was asked this question. Who will get to heaven? He said, whoever wants to get to heaven. They say, well, will <laughs> there be anybody who doesn't want to get heaven? He said, yes. yes. Those who hear this message and rejecting it don't want to go to heaven. Simple. You it's know? a choice. So, Islam is yes. all about choice and free will. It's choice. It's a choice and a free will, yes. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a question. 
on the chat box if you know how to do it. It is at the bottom of the chat box. You can click and it will show, show your hand up there. Uh, I have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, oh, Ruby. Is, yes. From Bangladesh. Yes, I'm from Bangladesh. But I'm from Minneapolis too, actually. Indeed. I'm both. My base For him, is you're Indeed. from Bangladesh. For me, you're from Minneapolis. <laughs> Whatever you want to see, you know, that's fine. But um, I am both an American citizen and also a Bangladeshi citizen. And I'm a citizen of the world. So I, I feel that yes. I... Uh, first, I belong to the uh, belong to humanity before I belong to any particular thing. And I think one thing I would like to um, uh, uh, add here is that that God is saying that every human being is given the capacity to sense truth and to discern right from wrong. And that has been defined in, uh, in one particular um, verse uh, where it says that to abide by or comply with the, or dictated by that nature that God has given or the empowerment that God has given human being, each and every human being, I mean, irrespective of race, color, gender, uh, anything or time, um, that that is the one ever true religion for mankind. It is, this definition is in the Quran. And I think this is the root of the Quran. And it, the second sentence it says is that most of the people do not know this pivotal concept of religion. So I'm, I'm, I'm again repeating it. It says, this is in, chapter Rome and verse 30. The number wise Rome chapter, uh, uh, Rome is 30 and the verse number is 30. So it is 30, 30 in the Quran. I, I, I think everybody can remember that. Dr. Kaskas and, mentioned about that earlier. Yes, so this, oh, I'm sorry that I have missed it, but I think this is the root because a human being has the ability um, to sense truth and discern right from wrong. And I think that we have an unseen umbilical cord with, uh, uh, with our creator, with God. And, and so it is both ways. He can guide you and you can sense the guidance. You have the sense, you have the capacity to sense the guidance. But if you are willing, and not only willing, but say you are doing whatever, you, you know, your other senses or greed or uh, lust or whatever, and then you are always saying, forgive me. And then again, next day, you are doing the same thing. I think, I think. What would that be your is, question? What would be your question? The I'll question come. is. Go ahead. My, my question? Yes. Yes. The question is that, uh, so that, sorry, that is a statement, not a question. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And sorry for, for taking this long time. No problem. No, no, no problem. Ibrahim has a question. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, Dr. Safi is telling that only human beings have the free will. Tell you one thing which is astonishing to you all that uh, if you have a conductor, this supposing this is a conductor, and you have five resistors like my thumb, forefinger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger, and each one has a measurement. This is one ohm, two ohm, three ohm, four, five ohms. Five is very highly resistive. So if I send the electron. Now the electron will go through the thumb, which is one ohm, not two, three, four, five. Now I change my thumb to the end. Then the electron comes and looks where the thumb is, which is one ohm, and it will go. If I put in the middle, it will go to the thumb, which is only one ohm. 
So this is something baffling to the people, how an electron knows where one ohm is. And so it has a free will now, it's choosing which one to select, number one. Number two is the animals also have a choice. We have a dog and we put food of different kind. It will select only what she likes, dog likes. You see, so what I mean, we had to rethink. Dr. Abraham, wait, wait, you're making a major mistake, logical mistake here. <clears throat> All animals have a choice, but their choices are not based on consciousness. They are based on what we call gariza. The, the, it's a built-in uh, simple program. When they're attacked, they either face you or run. There's no third choice. When you, put the, when you give them food, they'll go to the food they like the most. This is not choice. You have a bigger choice. You are on this small planet, but you are supposed to contain the creator of this whole universe in your heart. This is, a, if you compare that to the choice of the dog eating the one food or the other, I'm sorry. This is, <laughs> you're, we're by missing the, the boat here. By the way, we're doctor, the by the way, Dr. Ibrahim Sayed is one of the first uh, physicist, nuclear medicine, professor. He teaches in the University of Louisville, Kentucky. He He's a pioneer in teaching nuclear uh, science. Yeah. That, I appreciate that very much. But again, the choice we have is not because God wants to throw gifts here and there. We have a free choice so we can be responsible for those choices and come to, to, to a day of judgment uh, to be accountable for these choices. I don't know any dogs that will be there on the day of judgment. <laughs> for, I'm very serious. This yes. is a very serious issue. You know, uh, maybe we will help some animal later on develop consciousness. Maybe as, as, as we're developing artificial intelligence and other ways to uh, play with the genes. I don't know. But today, as I'm talking to you, we're the only sentient being on this planet that we know of in this universe. Friends, friends you're listening to Islamic I, Values Program. We have 2017 weeks we are going to do this program to learn about the values that contribute towards the well-being. And you will find this video, recorded video, in two places. If you just go to youtube.com and plug in Center for Pluralism, you'll find there, or you can type in Muslims together and you'll find the video there and you can share that with your friends from YouTube. Somebody has a question. Mike, I have a question for you. Uh, my question is, you interact with a lot of atheists. Yes, I do. Uh, what is uh, the, what do they say, how the universe is created? They, they uh, my simple response to that is, they believe something caused the universe to come into existence. They believe in the cause of existence, but the, what they don't ag agree is the uh, image or the narrative of God, but different faiths. And that is, but if you call it causer of the universe, they are in tune with you. Thank you so much. And Zaki Abidi has a question now. Yes, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Alaikum assalam. Uh, before I ask my question, uh, my English is not very good because it's a second language in here. So, and if I do any mistakes, you can correct me. And the question which I want to ask is somehow related to, to a statement which Dr. Kaskas has made and earlier. It was saying that in, it was talking about the ayah of yeah. and sometimes we see someone who has been a very good Muslim. He used to preach in a very nice way from his, the way he talks, the way he behaves. You, you can, you can somehow predict that this, this person is a very good Muslim and, and inshallah he might go to Jannah. But at the last part of his age, he turns out to be either a converts to either into a Christian or he does something bad at the end that's called in the, the khatima is khatima was very bad 
And in the other hand, you see someone who was a very bad and a very bad, he, he had a very bad character. He was not a Muslim. But at the last part of his age, he converts into a Muslim. So uh, how can we re relate the statement of and this person who was a very good Muslim and at the last part of his age, he becomes a non-Muslim or he dies. I understand the question. I understand. Let me reply. Brother okay, Zaki, Allah not only guide those who wants to be guided, but he also uh, lead astray, those who wants to be led astray. God will never lead you astray to Dalal if your intention is to be on his path. Only if you don't want to be on his path and you insist on it, that he'll take you away from his path. Those people that uh, are going to end up in hell, they're not there because they made a, a, a mistake or because of an incident or because they've done something without thinking about it. No, it's because they had a lifetime and they chose freely to do repeated actions that would lead them to hell. God is most forgiving. He starts every chapter of the Quran except one by saying, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. He is merciful to everyone. And he's especially merciful to the believers. So uh, don't, don't ever think that God play games with people. God wants us all to be in heaven with him. He created us to go to heaven. By the way, let me tell you, in the Quran, hell has a limited space. And heaven has <laughs> unlimited space. Wait, wait, wait. The, the percentage of people that will end up in hell it's like United States and the people that are in prison. Those in prison, about one percent percentage wise, like the people that will go to hell and people that are outside prison are the people that will end up in heaven because God uh, committed himself to be merciful. He forgive us most of our faults if we dare to ask for forgiveness. And some people don't even dare to do that. So God is very merciful. Those who insist on doing something bad, you will see them going the other way. But you haven't seen what they have been doing because they were doing it in secret between them and uh, the four walls of the room they were, they were in. But if you intend to, to, to be on the right path, God will definitely help you. Uh, there is a small story here that I would like to share with you. There is an atheist. Who, you, to, who had a, a statue uh, representing God, who used to pray to that statue every day. Statue in Arabic is Sanam. Ya yeah, Sanam, Ya yeah, Sanam, Ya yeah, Sanam. He's praying for that Sanam. And one day he made a mistake and he said, Ya yeah, Samad. Samad is one of the beautiful names of Allah. The one who exists without previous cause and without need of anything. So Allah Im immediately answered that particular person. He said, my worshiper, what do you need? The angel says, oh Allah, he made a mistake. He, didn't, he wasn't even calling on you. He said, if I don't answer him, what will be the difference between me and the statues he was worshiping? Wow. So Allah is with us right now, listening to what we say in today, right now, right this minute. And if we do a prayer, he will hear it. He Indeed. will hear it in the middle of all this noise. He can sort between each one of us and what we're thinking and what we're, what we're saying. So alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Let's see. Ibrahim said you had a question earlier, another one. Let's complete that and one. And I also have a question. Sure. Please unmute and ask the question. Brahim Saab. Brahim Saab, what's your question? Me? You're the only Saab we have. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I have a comment uh, in the sense that uh, uh, the Quran defines what God is. I have not seen any other scripture in the world which defines what God is. 
any scripture you take well, me and tell me there is jewish bahai and the other, the other they do and tell me what is the definition of god in that each scripture i don't have off hand but everybody defines god is just not islam no the definition of god in the quran is very very scientific and i have written an article you can go to google and put this the title is this scientific proof on the oneness of god scientific proof on the oneness of god can you summarize it in few words simply you go to uh, the surah ikhlas surah number 112 and go to uh, the ayat al kursi i think it's 255 surah baqara yes that's number 255 is a very beautiful definition of god and i have not seen any scripture which defines what you see people don't know you know they worship uh, so many things uh, ibrahim sahab uh, let me make a note here yeah. we know you know islam very well and you you see in the scripture but you don't know thoroughly the christianity judaism and other faiths they also have the definition we need to ask them okay. we cannot conclusively say they don't have it they do have it but i want to learn from them now yes that's a good point that's a good point uh, let me also add when uh, uh, brother zeki was talking he said this guy who looks very good at the end of his life start doing something bad like he became christian i w- i need to tell you that becoming christian is not bad at all as a matter of fact i've seen many many christians who are much better than i am and i believe that i am an orthodox muslim i i pray five times a day i do my fasting i read my quran and they are some christians that whom i know personally that are much better than i am they're more devoted to god than i ever been and I, so let's don't put other people down yes and let's take uh, and by the way there are also I, 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 some yeah. christians yeah ruby just a second there are also some yeah they 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 call the red letter christians they they take the gospel and everything that jesus says is written in red and that's what they follow those people as far as i'm concerned are muslims they are uh, following their followers of jesus which i consider myself one also and uh, they are devoted to god in ways that uh, uh, you know we we need we like to imitate you know so basically let's don't put anybody down we are here to talk about the quran what it says what other people say about their religion is their business let's pray for them if we don't think they are uh, as guided or as uh, the way they should be guided let's pray for them instead of cr- criticizing their belief I understand uh, ruby you had a question can comment no, i don't have a question but i have a comment here which is um mean many places quran has uh, validated all all previous scriptures and um revelations and um, also it has given um credence to all the prophets that god has sent and it says that there is not a time where a messenger was not sent and there is not a community where messenger is sent now the definition of community and definition of time here is a little bit different but but the idea is that the humanity has been uh, sent with a direct message from god uh, now i before i forget i want to say is that that first we have to emphasize on the meaning of islam and muslim or we've islam done that at the beginning sister and, we've done that today okay so, i'm going to post so, it on facebook that, that the reason oh i'm sorry that i missed but i want to add one more point that is um, there is a verse in the in bukhara bukhari uh, bakara <laughs> um uh, surah um, 87 uh the first uh, surah in madina and uh, in 62 uh, 
uh, it says that be he a um, uh, Jew, be he a Christian, Correct. be he a follower of the book or the Quran, or any who, any who, that means the rest of mankind. It gives three conditions. One is that believing in God and, and, uh, and doing good work, believing in God, believe, believing in hereafter and doing good work. Yes. These three conditions. Now the good work, it didn't define what good work is. That is defined throughout the Quran. And so we have to emphasize this, that that's the definition. So this verse, after that, in Surah Imran, and chronologically, the first verse is this one. The chronologically, that there is a middle verse, it says, God is saying, I will not accept any religion except Islam. And that Dr. Kaskas explained earlier. Okay. As a verb. So, it should have came earlier. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry that I missed, you're missed that. You're but I thought that it is a critical thing. But but a lot of people ask me these questions that maybe sure. the earlier yeah. verse was abrogated. No, no, there is no abrogation. Is not abrogated. No abrogation. There is no abrogation in the Quran. The same, no. The same, there is no same. abrogation in the Quran. No abrogation. Right. Period. Uh, Every right. word in its place. God I'm saying not. that some people have always challenged me. Yeah, they need to change this, their mind about it. There is no, no abrogation no, they, in the Quran. No, no, I'm saying that these two are contradicting. I said, no, this is not contradicting because the consistency lies no. in the meaning of Islam. 10 years later in Surah Maida, about 10 years later, the exact verse that is in... Um, Bakara was yes. repeated yes. Yes. in Surah yes. Maida, verse 69. Yes. So I'm saying that these two, when you want to, these three points, these three points in chronological, if you want to reconcile that the meaning of Islam has to be universal, which is submission to the will and law. It is, it is. Thank you. God. Thank you. Uh, this video will be posted on YouTube. On YouTube, you can go plug in Muslims Together, our Center for Pluralism, it will be posted in both the YouTubes. And you can start from the beginning. And the points you brought are very, very valid, very good points, and very common points. And those are being, those were addressed by Kaskas earlier in the program. Andra, and I, I have a question. We are coming to, a, go ahead, Zaki, Andra. make it short, please. we got a very few minutes left. Okay, I want to ask Mr. Mr. Dr. Gaskas a question. He has just mentioned that, and, and I want to ask him if, for example, if someone is a good Christian, what will he, what this good Christianity of him benefit him when he, and in Akhirah, for example, in hereafter? He, well, we have to ask when you are a Christian. No, no, wait. When you are a Christian, it means that you don't believe in the Quran and you don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad. How can this benefit you in, in, in Akhirah? Because you believe in God. God did not make it a condition that we believe in Prophet Muhammad to go to heaven. Look, questions about Al Akhirah or questions that are post mortem, after death, what will happen? Please don't ask me. And don't even bother yourself with them. Just be good on earth and leave the rest. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in his justice, trust in his uh, uh, fairness. He'll take care of everybody. Come on. Uh, anybody, you want to tell me that the lady who created a vaccine to treat polio is going to go to hell and a guy is sitting somewhere in uh, outside the shower uh, thinking about how to blow up some people is going to go to hell, to heaven because he believes in Allah and Prophet Muhammad. Well, his deeds don't confirm that at all. Allah says in the Quran, the person who does good deed, believe in Allah and does good deeds will go to, to heaven. And the rest is up to Allah, not to me or you. In the Why Quran, it says, Allah Allah will be the judge, not me nor you. Thank you very much, Zaki. And Andra has got a question. Uh, by the way, well, uh, Dr. Safi, a good deed is something you do for others without any benefit to beneficial yourself. To other people, anything beneficial to, to planet Earth. Yes. 
to creatures living on earth is a good deed. Thank you. Christians are not idol worshippers. They are believers in God. Thank you very much, Saki. Now, Andra, Andra, my sister, Andra, please go ahead and ask the question. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much. And, and on that high note of doing good to all creatures on earth, I just wanted to make a comment that uh, the latest information that we have about sentient beings is that animals are sentient beings because the definition of sentient is to be able to perceive and to have feelings and to feel things. And animals certainly do. Uh, that doesn't take away from the wonder of human beings being sentient beings, but it does support what you just said, Safi, about the importance of doing good and being good in the world to all creatures. Um, related to defining God, uh, there's a gentleman named Adin Steinsaltz, who's very revered uh, within Judaism. Uh, and uh, he talked about, uh, he said, and any, he says, any God that you can define is no God. He says, you can say what God is not, but there's no way that you can really, that a human being can really define what God is. And I think that's important for us to think about. I think we can do the best that we can, uh, but I think that would be most difficult because we don't know all of who Allah is. Yes. Uh, I also wanted to uh, make a comment about the table spread 548, uh, talking about different religions. Yes. Um, it's usually what I begin a lot of the interfaith gatherings that I coordinate with, uh, that uh, this is not exact, so please forgive me, but I think it's good enough to convey the message that each of you has your own holy books. Had God wanted, he would have created you one community, but he did not to test you. So vie then to live together and do good works. Compete, and I think compete that is, in doing good work. Andra, compete in doing good work. Yes, compete, mm -hmm. sure, compete. absolutely, compete, compete good work. with one that's another. Sure, compete that's what we're to do, work. and it's so beautiful that you just sort of ended the meeting, uh, Safi, yes. with yes, uh, what is most important is not the theoretical knowledge of, of what's going on in the, the Quran, it's the practical knowledge of what it wants us to do and how it wants us to be in the world, to be more loving, to be more compassionate, to be more merciful, and the prayers begin with, you know, oh, Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Yes. And that's, I think, what we really are given is that task during the life that we have to be as good a person, to be, as you said, to be able to, what did you say, to, um, uh, to, to mimic, to uh, carry yeah. out all of the wonderful to, to acts. Practice, to uh, practice those beautiful characters that God revealed yes. to us about himself. And yes. they are all human. He's the perfect, and we are trying to reach that perfection. Yes. Anyway, oh, God bless you. Thank you so much, Andra, for Thank this you. Coming. Thank oh, you, Safi. Thank you so much, Mike. We're coming to an end. We've got a few minutes left. Here are these few takeaway points. Islam is about being a good human being. Islam is the best. The most Muslim is one who cares for fellow human beings and everything that God has created in this universe. The best Muslim mitigates conflicts and nurtures goodwill among the society. A good Muslim is an exemplary citizen who cares about everything that God has created that we perceive and see. And Dr. Kaskas, uh, conclude the, with your statements, will conclude the program. I basically uh, thank, every, thank everybody that, who decided to join us today. Uh, I wish we have more time because I like to hear more people and uh, guys we learn Allah says in the Quran if it wasn't for God pushing one of us against the other intellectually earth will be spoiled so don't ever think that disagreement uh, are bad disagreement intellectual disagreement polite disagreement respectful disagreement will always increase our knowledge. So uh, uh, always doubt whatever I'm saying, because I'm going to doubt what you're saying, unless I become convinced, unless you have good logic behind it. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many, many, many times in the Quran ask the question, don't they think? Don't they use reason? Don't they use their brain? He gave us those gifts so we can use them. So a good Muslim today is the one who is thinking about everything, not imitating what we learned from our grandparents and moving along with it. We're living in a different time. We're living different days. We have different world around us. The, the information that's available to us, it's doubling every day. It's doubling every day. Can you imagine this? If you learn everything on the internet, the next day you'll need to do the same thing again. It's, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful world. It's a, it's a beautiful world. We just have to be in synchrony with God in order to live this life with happiness. Synchronize your will with God's will. If you don't know how, just pray that he will, will teach you how to do it. And then you, it, it'll happen. It will happen for you. And thank you very much again. Indeed. Friends, this thank video you. will be at the Muslims. If you go to youtube.com and type in Muslims Together, our Center for Pluralism, you will find this video. And we have 17 series every week from today for the next 16 weeks. We have a program about different issue, a different value of Islam that contributes towards the being. And the same link you got today is good for the next 17. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. And God bless you. God bless America. Peace to you all. Alaikum assalam. Thank you, Ruby.